Hey, what's up? I know it's uh, been quite some time since I uploaded anything on this channel, and I uh, figured it was time that I did that. So, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, my garage open up. Open up my garage, and we're gonna talk about some stuff. There we go. Is that garage opener sucks. And uh, we got this for for uh, what we're going to talk about too, and I'll explain a little bit about that. I um, don't know if it's actually going to work, but whatever. So, about a year ago, I uploaded a video of uh, this car, which is a 2004 RSA GT, and uh, yeah, I just kind of went over you know stuff I've done to it, stuff that's. Uh, went into it, parts I installed, and um, well, long story short, it's a Series 2 swapped uh, Series 1, meaning I took the engine, trans, and diff, subframes, and uh, a bunch of other stuff out of a 2009 RX-8 R3, which is a Series 2 model, and this being a Series 1 2004 uh, model, you know, with the Series 2 swap Series 1. Now, uh, is there really any significance with the swap? Um, there is, and mostly there's not. Uh, so essentially, um, essentially it's just a, a stock Series 2 RX-8, and that's really the whole goal of the entire swap, is to make it function as a, uh, just a stock Series 2 RX-8 with, uh, some, you know, OEM, uh, performance stuff. So, suspension and, uh, bracing and other stuff things like that so yeah stock engine stock trans stock diff uh, from a series 2 in this car and um, let's see in my last video I I think uh, I think the only thing that wasn't done was the interior wiring and uh, look right here you see a lot of that uh, I think this is the uh, under dash wiring And, um, let's see, in my last video, uh, it was pretty much a, to the point it is now, except uh, I was barely taking the dash out, and, uh, yeah, everything was still in here, and I think I said that the car was 95% done at that point, that all I had to do left was interior wiring. That was absolute and complete bullshit. Uh, because the interior wiring took more effort than anything to do. Um, putting the diff, uh, the trans, the engine, the subframes in, that was all easy because that bolted right in and there was zero modification that I had to do at all. Just bolts right in. Uh, because the, uh, the bodies between series one and two are exactly the same. There's no difference between them. So yeah, that was easy. Um, with the, the interior wiring, it was kind of the same deal. It was just getting everything to go in its place. So the interior wiring, and I'll, I'll show you uh, kind of a progression slide show, show type deal of uh, taking all the shit out, all the Series 1 stuff out, uh, gutting out the interior. Um, I see all the Series 2 wiring that's where the, uh, the uh, driver's seat is, just all tangled up. Now that series, that series two wiring, I had to take in and out of the car three separate times because, well, it kept getting tangled up every time I put it back in. So I take it back out, untangle it, put it in. It would retangle, getting it back in the car, and then finally on the third time, I untangled it inside the car and then got it all in place. Uh, the other big obstacle was getting the dash back in. Um, I was having a hell of a time getting the center of it to go down. The sides would go down, but the center wouldn't seat. And then one day I, I fucked with it for like an hour or two, and then I finally got it to actually seat. I still don't know what the issue was there, but it's seated and I'm happy with that. So I'm not gonna, not gonna fuck with it any further. And uh, now it's, uh, yeah, it's all in place. I just need to kind of clean it up now. So you see some wires dangling down here. Center console is, well, it's not in there. It's just kind of 
wired and stuff. And then the center console on the dash, uh, I need to figure out some stuff there because I think some wires are uh, you know, a little constricted and can't get to where they need to go. So, yeah, I gotta figure that out. But that's not the biggest issue I have to have to figure out. And I will show you what the deal is. I'm gonna go ahead and hook the car up. And by the way, that's a brand new battery I got like two months ago. Uh, the battery that I got for it, um, I think when this car first went down, or a little bit afterwards, uh, I put it on the ground and I guess doing that killed the battery. Uh, because I went and had the battery tested and it tested bad. So uh, it has a three year warranty on it and in this November. So that, that was kind of cool, I got a brand new free battery. But let me show you what this car does. All right, so you see the uh, gauge cluster lit up. It's fucking lit, fam. <laughs> so, uh, turn to ACC mode, I get nothing. I get clicky noises and stuff, but nothing. Then I turn it to on. I can hear fuel injectors working. I can smell a little bit of fuel, but I can't hear the fuel pump working, so that's its own issue, I guess. Gotta figure that out. But also, Oh shit, not entirely a bad thing because I don't have the fuel line hooked up to the fuel pump. So, uh, but there's no fuel in the tank anyway, so whatever. Oh, yes, and if I, uh, if I block the doors, it does that. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what it does. And that's actually exactly what it did in the, uh, R3 parts car when I tried to turn it on. Now, what the issue with that is a uh, IDS uh, security system issue, and let's see, I got this little IDS scan tool thing off eBay. I'll uh, go ahead and stop this recording so I can turn my light on. Okay, got this little IDS scan tool off eBay for ninety-two bucks shipped. And uh, basically what this does is it gives me the power of a dealer to uh, you know, get into the CAN bus system or the, uh, the ECU and read it and find out what the fuck is going on with stuff. So, um, and I'll, I'll show you some pictures right now of the errors I'm getting right now. So uh, the RKE modules, which is remote keyless entry, uh, some of them weren't reading before. Uh, there were a lot more error codes I was getting before, but now I got it down to two of them. One of them is the trunk lift gate, and the other one is the uh, Sirius radio unit module thing. And um, yeah, they, uh, it's either no antenna frequency or low antenna frequency or some shit like that. There, there's issues with them that I need to figure out, but uh, with the the radio unit thing. Actually, let's go back and show you. Ah, shit. That's actually why I brought this little guy out, because that came with the uh, aftermarket radio that I got. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the serious uh, radio module unit thing. Actually, you know what? I don't think that thing that I got will work. Never mind. Shit. So, um, let's see. The uh, cord, which the cord's right here. This is the uh, antenna wire that goes to it. And, see, that ripped at some point. I don't know where the other end is. Anyway, that ripped, and, well, that's uh, why it's not getting any anten antenna frequency. So I think this is the low antenna frequency or something like that. And then I think this one's the uh, trunk lift gate module thing. Um, may or may not be, or maybe it's a separate thing and it, it's actually right here. But um, yeah, those are the two that I'm having issues with I need to figure out. 
and also I still need to uh, finish up the trunk wiring. But yeah. So once I get past that, uh, with the IDS scan tool and using Mazda IDS 106.00, um, what I can do is uh, reset all the RKE modules and then um, reprogram them so all the codes match. And once all the codes match, uh, I should be able to turn the car on and then, of course, put fuel in it, put oil in it, since there's no oil in the engine. And then, uh, you know, fire the car up. But, um, you know, until I get to that point, uh, this is where I'm at. And then, of course, I gotta finish all this shit. Um, aside from that, I did get some new stuff. I did replace my gauges. I got, uh, Let's see Pro Sport Evo, is that what they're called? Yeah, Pro Sport Evo, uh, red and blue gauges. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do for uh, running and uh, daytime, whatever, because you can switch the colors on them. I have the uh, the green and white ones in my RX-7, and I absolutely love them. And the only reason I got those for the RX-7 is because I loved how much how they looked on these or in this car. Um. Let's see, what else? I think in my my very first video, I uh, showed you which wheels were on the car. Um, they were uh, eBay, you can get them on eBay for like 550 shipped. Uh, they were ADR M Classics, uh, 18 by 8.5 in the front and 18 by 9.5 in the rear. Um, I didn't like them. I didn't really like them at all. I, I traded an iPad for them, and uh, that, that's the only reason I had them. But um, they had brand new tires on them. I ended up selling them for 500 bucks. I also sold the uh, TPMS sensors with them because they were already in the wheels. And uh, with that 500 bucks, 350 of it went to buying a stock Evo 10 end case. They are 18 by 8.5 uh, front and rear, plus 38 uh, front and rear also. Uh, the tires I got, let's see what tires did I get from the front, they are Rydan something, Roadster, yeah, Rydan's Roadster, whatever, they are 70 bucks a piece, uh, they were like 145 bucks shipped, they're just cheap shitty tires that are, they just get the car on the ground, that's why I got those, and then I came across a, uh, one on KSL, just a local classifieds website, or a, a news website with classified section. Went on there and found these uh, Falcon Pro G4s for a hundred bucks for the pair. And they had like 5,000 miles on them, a really good amount of tread on them. So I got those and because they were a better tire, I uh, put those on the rear. And yeah, I'm happy with them. I'm really happy with how the, uh, the wheels look on the car and you know It's not too bad. I mean, it's not flawless fitment, but I don't really give a shit. These are just gonna be daily wheels um, I also have not gotten my, uh, my bonus from the army. That's why I don't have T37s on the car But um, yeah, the plan is still to get those and uh, you know, well, whenever that happens See aside from that uh, See, something I did, and then I'm also going to revert later, um, I'll talk about my reasons why. I removed all of my AC stuff. So my AC compressor, all the AC uh, tubing and stuff like that. I removed all of it, and the main reason is because of the AC condenser. So my RX-7 over there, I don't have any AC anything in there, and because I'm used to that, I don't really care so much about it, um, even though it is pretty damn hot during the daytime uh, over the summer in Utah. I'm, I'm just used to it. I roll the windows down and I'm just fine. But because this is meant to be a daily driver, and uh, I will be driving my daughter around in it, um, she doesn't really like not having air conditioning uh, when I drive around in my RX-7. So because of her, I'm going to go ahead and put the AC stuff back in. But, I'm not going to revert from my original plan, uh, which was to remove the condenser to uh, unblock airflow going to the radiator. And, um, 
Yeah, the way the radiator or the condenser mounts is right in front of the radiator, uh, just in the top and rear, just like this uh, racing beat uh, cover thing is. I forget the exact name of it, but uh, I'll include a link in the description below for this because this is actually really good to have. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do is uh, get LRB speed uh, aluminum under tray and uprights. I think they're like 180 bucks shipped or uh, maybe a little bit less than that and with the condenser what I'm going to do is flat mount it on the uh, on the uh, under tray and then cut some holes in the in the bottom uh, to vent, vent it and then put some fans on the back of the condenser so I can get some airflow coming through on demand so when I turn the uh, AC on the cold then all the fans should will kick on and then yeah I'll have AC again or a fully functional AC. Um, let's see, the uh, the only downside I could see from that is I won't get direct airflow to it. But yeah, I'd, I'd much rather have a, uh, a not as functional, well, it'll, it'll be fully functional, but not as a cold AC, but still have AC, then uh, you know, deprive the radiator from getting airflow. Um, other things I'll be doing for the uh, airflow to the radiator. Um, I was thinking about getting an under tray uh, to go under my intake, but you know if I put that there, then I'll just be blocking airflow going in the uh, the back of the uh, the radiator. And then with the battery, I'll be relocating that, so there will be just nothing down here, and there'll be airflow going through there. And uh, that should improve cooling. Um, yeah, so that's my plan there. So uh, reverting the uh, the cooling system to putting it back in, and then uh, yeah, relocating the battery to the trunk or something. Um, I think that's really about it. Other than that, um, I still have to redo uh, bodywork stuff like the side skirts and the rear diffuser. I still haven't gotten on that yet, but it's not really a priority. Uh, same thing with that front bumper. Um, I also did get a uh, junkyard spare bumper, it's just an aftermarket uh, OEM style bumper, this little guy right here, and uh, I'll probably paint that or something, I don't know what I'll do, and then uh, that I'll just use for, I don't know what I'll use it for, maybe i use it for, uh, for a track bumper or something, because uh, once I redo this Mazda Speed bumper I'm not really going to want to fuck it up, but uh, whatever. We'll see. And uh, of course, because I haven't gotten my bonus yet either, the uh, Spirit R passenger seat is still kind of fucked up. So uh, that's why it's still like that. All right, well, I think uh, that pretty much covers where the car's at now. Um, it's come a long way in the last year. Um, just because I'm lazy and you know work nights and sleep all day, don't really have a whole lot of time to, to work on this as much as I'd like to, to you know, make more progress on it more rapidly. But, uh, you know, progress was made, and I uh, just kind of wanted to go over that, and I just stabbed myself in the leg with the uh, center console piece. Yep, shit. Oh, yes, before I forget also, uh, I got rid of my uh, door panels with the black with the red accents and got all black ones. So now they actually match. Before we end this video off, I'll go ahead and show you. Can't really see them, but they look a lot better with the uh, the dark red seats. And then these are going to go away too. Okay, so I think that actually covers it now. So um, wiring stuff left. Uh, it's all in the car. Just got to figure out the little issues that it does have. And uh, hopefully my next video will be a start video, or a first start video, and um, you know, maybe a first drive. All right, well, if you have any uh, comments you wanna comment about the build, uh, feel free to do so. Primarily subscribe, and uh, you can find me on Facebook just under my name. And uh, yeah, all right, see ya.